NASA says it's time to prioritize the planet Venus. This follows the recent discovery of possible life on the planet. If you were to take a peek at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd notice the space agency calling Venus a planet from hell. At the same time Mars became our destiny. Such careful labeling of the innermost planets isn't a coincidence. During the turbulent space race era, the Soviet Union was fixated on sending costly missions to Venus. The hellish planet showed little to no prospects for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the empire. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally know why. Join us as we break down the declassified photos from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one. Not only did it change the geopolitical course of the world, but the loss of the empire also sank many secrets with it. It's not unknown that the Soviets had a deep affinity for secrets, from running the most advanced intelligence agency in the world to being hush-hush about their potential alien contact. The former superpower carries numerous mysteries within itself. Believe it or not, before the United States of America took over most of the planetary efforts in outer space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the Empire has a long history of successful and unsuccessful space missions, its biggest fixation was on the inner hellish planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd recognize Venus as Venera, and hence the subsequent name of the mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. During the same time the United States of America was busy sending its missions to the moon, so strategically, the Soviets decided to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the entire obsession with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets plan on using the planet's surface as a viable and unbeatable military base? Or were they possibly looking to colonize the planet after searching for any forms of life up there? It's quite difficult to say why the Empire was obsessed with the hellish planet. Since the Soviets commissioned these exploration voyages during the Cold War, they weren't exactly forthcoming with their aims and objectives. In fact, everything we know about the Venusian missions is due to unarchived and declassified evidence. Even then, it's hard to pinpoint what the Soviets were searching for and if they cracked the secrets of Venus. Because while the Empire didn't land on Venus once, twice, or thrice, that's just elementary folks. The Soviets launched 28 pricey spacecraft to the hellish planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere while 8 landed successfully. Such sophisticated missions had put the Empire in a leading position in space exploration initiatives. Sure, the United States of America was a close first too, but NASA was more interested in satellites and technological configuration than exploring life on planets. Its affection for Mars came later. So, your history textbook might not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first agency to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It has another bunch of firsts on its resume as well. The USSR also became the first state to make a soft landing on another planet. It commissioned the first initiative that brought back images and sounds from the surface of other planets. Yep, the Soviets had their own one small step for a man, a giant leap for mankind, that was well before the US. So how come we rarely get to read about such landmark missions? Very rarely. Remember what we said about the Soviet affinity for keeping secrets? Well, that's just one of the many reasons behind the censorship of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the popular agency was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR. As the agency had to be revived with its new Russian identity, Roscosmos, a lot of its archival data was either lost or destroyed. This is exactly why we don't have a clear-cut answer for why the Soviets launched 28 spacecraft into the Venusian atmosphere. But if we had to make the most logical guess, perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. This is not to say that the space program wasn't optimistic about the habitability of the planet. They were looking for sustainable water presence, intensity of solar radiation, and the overall temperament of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been next to impossible to gauge Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Of course, today, many cosmologists don't believe that the hellish planet can support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Plus, due to its thick atmosphere, the air pressure on Venus is 90 times that of our planet Earth. But these are quite recent and modern tidings. 
and to disregard the USSR's contribution to the study of Venus is equivalent to censoring history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth exploring, even if it was just about galvanizing the space race. You see, exploring more habitable planets like Mars wasn't exactly off the table, but it was more costly than probing into Venus. Everything just boils down to the distance from planet Earth to any other cosmological body. On average, the hellish planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars, on average, is 250 million kilometers away. Such vast differences in distance amount to drastic differences in the costs as well. If the United States of America wasn't the world's largest economy, it wouldn't have been easy to explore Mars. Other rumors on the block also suggest that the Soviet missions were unreliable and had massive technical gaps. Apparently, the spacecraft wasn't suitable to cover astronomical distances. Plus, the agency had a bad trajectory of losing contact with its spacecraft. So it makes sense why the Soviet space program was opting for a shorter and closer transit that would actually yield results. Yet, if we don't bring up the space race in this context, the story of Venera missions would be incomplete. The United States of America wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This particular maneuver had intensified the space tussle to maintain its hegemony. But what's really interesting is why the U.S. had fixated itself on the moon in the first place. Uncharted territory aside, NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions in the 1960s. And so, on, the U.S. Space Agency had found itself in a deadlock called the Venus Curse. Every time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it went horribly wrong. This is precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and USSR were hellbent on claiming the space race. The most logical venture was to steer away with two different options. It was a silent agreement. Very strategically, the Soviet space program took hold of Earth's sister planet. For the agency, the biggest landmark in the space tussle was to do something that its competitive counterpart had failed to do. Despite the empire's limited resources and mismanaged government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to find its winning position against the U.S. As opposed to that, NASA had taken hold of the moon's mission. But of course, this strategic partition wasn't without hostility and propaganda. To cover up their colossal failures with Venus, the American agency was incentivized to defame the USSR's fixation with the planet. In Americanized popular media, Venus was dubbed as the hellish planet while Mars became man's destiny. These connotations didn't matter to the Soviets, though. Their only objective was to show superiority to the Americans, and well, they weren't unsuccessful in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in today's history. However, despite their dated emergence, those missions were highly sophisticated, advanced, and ambitious. In fact, if we have to pick an event that marked the dawn of the space age, the Venera explorations will definitely take the lead. Back in the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and construction specifics of the probes. And for the next 30 years, they kept building and launching interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running parallel with a highly turbulent Cold War, the Soviets were obsessed with optimizing their resources. Luckily for them, the early years of the war gave them more heavy lifting capacity than the United States of America. That advantage proved to be super beneficial. Maximizing on their capabilities, the USSR started to build and launch bigger spacecraft that were designed to maintain high altitudes and vast distances. The Soviets were quick to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft. At the same time, the Soviet scientific community was working on a series of calculations and estimations to create accurate trajectories for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running successfully. For the Soviet Space Agency, nothing was more important than developing sophisticated instrumentation for these probes. This translated to the biggest revelation in the history of cosmological studies. In 1966, the Soviet agency launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully touch the planet's surface. This groundbreaking success had amplified the competition between the two superpowers. As opposed to the American missions that were filled with failures and deadlocks, the Soviet program continued to gain traction. 
Despite the program's slow burn, the USSR was pulling all the strings to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The biggest problem with this trajectory was limited design capacity. The Soviets were quick to overcome their design issues and launched the biggest spacecraft of the Venera program in the 1970s. Their high-lifting capacity allowed them to conduct the first dual launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most interesting decade in the history of cosmological studies. As a matter of fact, the United States of America did try to come up with similar launch designs. So why did the Soviet agency send dual launches into Venus in the first place? You'd have to understand that interplanetary travel requires sophisticated instrumentation that can gather the highest level of data and evidence. Of course, the spacecraft was first sent to monitor the surface of the planet. This is exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly and the spacecraft entered the atmosphere of Venus successfully, the Soviet program proceeded with Venera 5. It wasn't just a repetition of the first launch. The second spacecraft was particularly engineered to gather unprecedented data about the planet. In other words, the Soviets were looking to crack the temperature, atmospheric pressure, and level of radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers, though. By the early 1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most refined phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done until then was about research and development. It was about making sure that their designs and constructions were optimized. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics for interplanetary travel. But for the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union was looking to conduct experimental missions. The most successful and interesting launch of this time was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered the atmosphere of Venus, it became the first spacecraft to send data from another planet. The planet's high temperatures, Thickness and surface pressures were already noted. Now, the Soviets were trying to record Venusian sounds for the first time. The next big success for the program came in the early 1980s. Venera 13 had surpassed all previous interplanetary explorations in terms of sophistication. This particular spacecraft was the first to capture colored panoramic photos of Venus's surface. During the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was one of the first nations to discover and recognize Venus, the Russian Federal Space Agency has revived its ambitions in the Venerid missions. Venerid is a planned joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The acronym Venerid stands for Venets in Russian, meaning long-lasting. The mission is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s. It aims to study the planet's atmosphere, climate, geological history, and search for signs of life or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly a balloon to study the planet's atmosphere in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technological achievements and geopolitical implications. These missions, spearheaded by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human ingenuity and determination in exploring the cosmos. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, the Soviets persisted in their quest to unlock the mysteries of Venus, a planet long considered inhospitable and hostile to life. One of the most significant aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary atmospheres and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's immediate vicinity and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided invaluable insights into Venus's extreme environment, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Moreover, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration as a whole. The development of durable heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and reliable landing techniques were crucial milestones that contributed to subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in today's space exploration endeavors. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had profound cultural and political implications. At the height of the space race, 
These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, achieving success in the Venera missions was not just about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The international community closely watched each Venera mission, recognizing their importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a significant milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from the surface of another planet. This achievement underscored the Soviet Union's capability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus's harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus's surface. These images revealed a rugged terrain dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing scientists with valuable geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. The panoramic photos taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus's surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and setbacks. Several missions either failed to reach Venus or encountered technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The challenges of operating in Venus's hostile environment, including extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius 842 degrees Fahrenheit and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, posed significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the perseverance and dedication of the Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming Venerity mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Venerity mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by deploying advanced instruments to study Venus's atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and to expand humanity's understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.